The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. Among America's well-known men are many who came from Europe to try their fortunes and make their homes in this land of opportunity. One of the most appealing and important of these was a German-Swiss named John A. Sutter. Although he is known chiefly because gold was discovered on his California property, Sutter's life was actually spent as a pioneer, a homemaker, and a farmer. For centuries, alchemists had tried unsuccessfully to make gold from base metals and failed. DuPont chemists have learned to make products infinitely more valuable from cotton, wool, coal, and other everyday substances. As Sutter worked quietly and earnestly on the work that he believed more important than the discovery of gold, similarly, the research chemist is striving earnestly towards the ideal, which is summed up in the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. As an overture, Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra will play Alice Holiday from Rudolph Frimmel's operetta, Katinka. <laughs> DuPont Cavalcade moves on. <laughs> Johann August Sutter was born at Cannern in Baden, Germany, of Swiss parents in 1803. At the age of 31, he left his family in Burgdorf in the canton of Bern and set out for the new world to make his fortune. He landed at New York, pushed westward to St. Louis, 
And from there, he was soon traveling as a trader over the famous Santa Fe Trail. Most of the American Southwest was then Mexican territory. And in the summer of 1835, we find Sutter crossing what was then the boundary line between the United States and Mexico. At this outpost, a crowd attracted by the dust cloud raised by his wagon wheels is at the gate. Los Americanos! Los Americanos! The caballeros de los Americanos! Oh, easy now, easy. Oh, oh. Uh, excuse me, senor, but could you tell me where I can find the head of the government in Santa Fe? I am the alcalde here, senor. Oh, but I am John Silver, with a caravan of merchandise from St. Louis. Ah. <laughs> I am glad to stretch my legs after riding so long. You are an Americano, senor. I am Swiss, but I hope to become an American. Ah, senor, you should be a Mexican. That is a great country, the land of opportunity. Eh, what more could I ask than the fine land of the American West? Ah, then you have never seen California. Eh, California? Well, I've heard of it. Is it all they claim? Senor, there is no place to equal it. I cannot wait to return. Beauty, fertility, we does everything. And the climate, our senor, the climate uh, of Castro. Speaking of climate, uh, do you mind if we get a little in out of the sun, oh, huh? Pardon <laughs> me, senor. My hacienda is close by. We shall find cooler shade there. Come. Uh, Enter, senor. Thank you. Sit down, senor. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I should like to present my passports, pay my duties, and tend to my business here. Afterward, I will be glad to hear more of California. You can hear all about California in one word, senor. I would rather be a peon in California than a free man anywhere else in the world. <laughs> well, that should be easy for an alcalde to arrive. Uh, alas, no. The Mexican government has other ideas, senor. It thinks I have value here. <laughs> well, I hope my cargo has some tent your value, alcalde. Well, we need almost everything here. So, no matter what you bring... It will quickly be converted into gold and silver. Oh, then I shall be as lucky as King Midas <laughs> without his curse. Uh, pardon me. Uh, King Midas? Who is he? Oh, he is in a story I used to tell my children. A miser who wished that everything he touched would turn into gold. But, senor, where is the curse in that? Why, a man cannot eat and drink gold, senor. And when King Midas touched food... Ah, see, si, see, si, see, si, I understand. He turned to gold and he starved. Uh, that is a good story. But fortunately in California, the greatest riches come from its cold and sunlight. Oh, then someday I will go to California. To me, there is no gold so fine as a field of wheat ripening in the summer sun. <laughs> later, John A. Sutter started for California by way of the Oregon Trail. Arriving in Vancouver in October, he found that he couldn't get south by land until spring, so he boarded a ship bound for Honolulu. From there, he went to Sitka, Alaska, which was then Russian territory, with a load of merchandise. With the supplies he received in exchange, he sailed south, and at last entered the picturesque city of Monterey, the capital of Mexican California. In the patio of the bright adobe headquarters, Sutter is received by the governor, Alvarado. Samuel Sutter, your papers are in good order. And the letters you bring me from my friends in Honolulu speak most highly of you. What do you want of me? I understand you are granting land. I want a place where I can make myself a home. I'll take land you cannot govern easily because it's far away. Will uh, you be responsible for keeping order there? Yes. And it'll be like an outpost for you to protect your lands along the seacoast. Let me see. There is uh, the Sacramento Valley. Some say it is beautiful and fertile, uh, very far away. I think it might do you very well. I am ready to start any time. You are very confident, senor. I like action. <laughs> senor, you go select your land. If you still want it a year from today, come back. Then I will make you a citizen of California and the ruler of your own land. The Tonk Cavalcade moves forward.
The land John Sutter selected was in the beautiful valley where the American River flows into the Sacramento. With firmness and justice, he gained the confidence of the Indians who lived there. They helped him and his white followers to build homes, plant fields, and tend herds of cattle and sheep. In a year, Governor Alvarado made him owner and ruler of the great farm empire he was founding. As the years slipped by, men came inland from the coast, not wandering trappers, but home builders. In August of 1847, Sutter is in his headquarters as John Bidwell, his right-hand man, comes into the room. Oh, Captain Sutter. Yeah? Yes, Bidwell? Uh, sorry, sir. I didn't mean to interrupt your writing. Oh, I have just finished. I have been writing to my wife and family back in Switzerland. Uh, it's been so long since I've seen them. Oh, well, they'll soon be able to join you. We've had a fine crop of wheat everywhere. The herds have increased by thousands. You are the owner of one of the most fertile valleys on earth. Yeah, I have everything in goods, but as yet no money. Even my supplies from Monterey must be paid for in beaver skin, salmon, and tallow. You'll have plenty of cash one of these days. Every acre of your land is fertile, even the mountains. Yeah. And your trees are already full-grown and plentiful. That's what I came to see you about. Gosh, we cannot sell trees. Everybody has trees. Oh, I mean we need them for ourselves. We have such a good harvest, we've got to make new threshing floors at all the farms. It'll take too long to hew the timber and smooth it by hand. We've got to have a sawmill. Yeah? There. Well, there's a good fall of water at American Fork. Well, that's 40 miles from here. <laughs> I'll build you a road to it. Yeah, but then who will build the mill? There's a good man who's been working on the flour mill with me, name of uh, James Wilson Marshall. Yeah? Well, send for him. He's uh, right outside. <laughs> I might have known you'd lose no time, Bidwell. <laughs> uh, come in, Marshall. <laughs> Thanks. I do, Captain. Fine, fine, fine. Sit down. Thanks. Yeah. So, you want to build a sawmill on the American Fork, eh? Sure I will. Yeah. So how much? Well, I don't want to be paid in any of the tin money you use around here. Why? That's the best money there is. What, just pieces of tin with stars stamped on them? Yeah, but every star means a full day's work. When a full day's work is equal to a fixed amount of wheat, land, or cattle, we've got a full schedule. Well, why not give out the goods instead of the tin coins? Because a man out here can only eat so much food and look after a few cattle of his own. So, when he wants to save credit for the future, he takes the coin. Yes, but that kind of money is no good for credit outside of here. Uh, it would be if the world had any sense. As long as it ain't, I'll pass up your tin money. Well, what's your proposition for building and managing a sawmill? One half of all the timber cut in it. Huh? Yeah, it sounds fair to me. Hey, Bidwell? I think it is. All right, then. Drop the agreement, Bidwell. Yes, sir. I'll make a note of it in my diary. I should think, Marshal, it should be as well off with our tin coins as a pile of lumber out here in the woods. Well, I can turn that lumber into gold in San Francisco. Well, money is scarce even there. Yes, it's strange no gold has been found in California. Well, maybe it's here, but just buried too deep for our plowing and digging to turn up. Uh, I'd give half my land for enough of it to bring my family over here. You know, sometimes I get so lonely for my wife and children... I wish, I wish every blade of wheat and every head of cattle were made of solid gold. <laughs> Might as well make a good wish while you're at it, Captain. Wish it with the stones in the Sacramento. Uh, you can laugh, but it isn't funny to me. Well, here's the agreement about the sawmill. If you men don't mind waking up from your pipe dreams, you can sign your names here. Maybe the sawmill will change your luck, Captain. There may be real money in those woods. I only want enough to bring my family here to me. at the sawmill progressed slowly. After the mill race was dug, there was trouble with the tail race. The stubborn rock made it hard to dig deep and wide enough to carry the water from the mill. Meanwhile, California became a part of the United States, and the wild new territory now flew the American flag. On January 24th, 1848, Marshall comes into Sutter's Fort in great excitement. Captain Sutter! Eh? Oh, hello, Marshall. You look all head up as though it was summer. Are we alone? Yeah? Yeah, I'll bolt the door. Hey, you are very secret and mysterious, Marshal. What are you so excited about? This! Well, it looks just, uh, just like an old dark bottle to me. Take it up. Look what's in it. Well, oh, it's heavy. Right. It is. It's gold. Gold! Well, how do you know? Have you tested it? Maybe it's fool's gold. Feel the weight of it. Bite into it. 
I feed it with rocks. It's malleable. Soft and heavy. It's gold, I tell you. Jeremy, sure, where did you get it? In the tail race of the sawmill. The gravel's full of it. It's everywhere. You're a rich man. You're worth millions. Billions. Yeah, I'm not so sure of that. It's your land, isn't it? I don't know. It was in California. It was Mexican country, but now it's occupied by the United States. I don't know for certain whose it is. Well, can't you do something to make sure? Yeah, well, I, I can send a copy of my lease to the American governor for official approval. Do it quick. There's no time to lose. I'll do it now. You can take it to the governor. No, no. i got to get back to the sawmill. Uh, then I'll send Bennett. we we got to keep the secret. Don't the men know what you found? They watch me, but they think it's just scraps. Not worth losing their pay for. A day's pay. Why, I can pick up more than that in 15 minutes. Oh. You'll have everything you want in the world now, Captain. If you can just keep it secret and move fast. As Sutter watched Charles Bennett sail down the Sacramento River to get official confirmation of his lease of land from the Indians, he knew it would be no easy matter to keep the Great Bonanza secret. Bennett stops off at Benicia on his way down the river to Monterey and drops into Fister's general store to hear the news of the day. Hello there, Fister. Well, hello, Bennett. What's the news from Sutter's fort? Well, the flour mill's nearly finished. We're waiting for the millstones. You'll have a long wait. The part that one of the stones broke down. Say, here, Sutter's building a sawmill. Yep. He's got plenty of fine timber to be cut for the asking. Timber? <laughs> plenty of that around here. Too bad he didn't have real luck like they had over to Mount Dabolo. Uh, what's that? Coal. They found coal there. Scads of it. I tell you, man, California's going to be a great state someday. Coal? Sure, that's nothing. It's more than Sutter's got. Oh, no, it ain't. Not by a darn type. <laughs> you fellas up the valley, they're just dirt farmers. Digging crops out the ground. That is, if there ain't no frost or drought or flood. Now, coal... Oh, huh? Yeah. We got something a heap sight finer and better than coal. Here, get an eye full of this. Well, what's that? What do you think it is? Uh, it looks like gold. Is it gold? I ain't saying it is. I ain't saying it ain't. Well, there must be six ounces of it. That's a lot of money. Where'd you get it? Well, I ain't come from no place but Sutter's. Gosh, old Jupiter. Gold. Boys, boys, come on over here. Sir. It's on the ground and they have to dig for it. Well, what's around, Mr. Look at this. Look at this. Just look at it. Look at what? What is it? Gold. Oh, gold. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Bennett dashes on for Monterey and sees the military governor. While he is making the return trip, a wagoner comes into the saloon run by D.C. Smith at Sutter's Fort. What's the Oh, there's Smith. Set him up. No, not me, Joe. You owe me for the last time. Oh, set him up, I tell you. I'll take your word for what I owe you. And I'll take your money for it before I pour you a drop. Money, is it? <laughs> well, here. Take this. What's that? Gold. Gold. Where did you get it? I was up the sawmill with some supplies. Just picked this up at lunchtime. Joe, you're a thief. Yeah, and you're a fool. Yeah, I would be if I thought gold was lying around waiting to be picked up for the asking. Well, you're a fool if you don't believe it. Tell you everybody up there is picking up somebody when they got nothing better to do. Nothing better than you, idiot. What else could be better than picking up gold without work? Uh, it's just some of that fool's gold. Well, it won't be fool's gold until it belongs to you, Smith. No, no, you can't talk me into giving you any more credit, Joe. Now, you take that gravel somewhere else. Go on, get out of here. But it's the real thing, I tell you. Hey, here's Captain Sutter. Just come in. You can ask him. He knows about it. Captain. Yeah, but what's all the rumpus here, Smith? Captain, this fella here says there's gold at your sawmill. Oh, so you heard about it already, eh? Is that it? Tell him it is, Captain. I picked it up in the tail race, same as everybody else. It's a genuine article, ain't it? Yeah, it's gold right enough. Say, is there is there much of it there? I'm afraid there's a great deal of it. You're afraid? Why, Captain Sutter, let me congratulate you, sir. You'll be the richest man in California. Hey, is the captain here? Oh, there you oh, are, Captain. Oh, Bennett, Bennett, I am glad you're back here. What luck, huh? Yeah? Well, sir, you, you see, Captain, sir? Oh, the governor refused, sir. Eh? Oh, no, sir, not, not exactly refused, sir. You see, California ain't Mexican now, and, and it ain't exactly part of the United States yet, either. Yeah? Ain't no laws apply here now. 
Governor Mason says he couldn't confirm your lease if he wanted it. Oh, I see. Then until the United States takes over, there's no real authority in California. Well, of course, they'll confirm your land for sure then, but meanwhile... Yeah, I, I understand. Meanwhile, we're all just squatters. Well, I reckon I'll be getting back to the storm. Uh, wait a minute, I'll go with you. Uh, you'll be needed in the fields tomorrow, Bennett. Uh, I'll be working only in the gold fields from now on, Captain. Come on, Joe. Yes, sir. Smith, pour me a brandy. What's the matter, Captain? You don't seem pleased. You ought to be jumping with joy. Why, you'll be the richest man in the world. Everybody says so. It'll be lucky if I have enough left at Hook Farm to make a good home for my family now. Oh, I don't understand, Captain. Surely all this gold really belongs to you. Well, I heard him call it Sutter's Gold. Yeah, but they'll take it for their own just the same. And nobody can stop them. Ah, there must be enough for all. Yeah, the more there is, the poorer I'll be. Don't you see? They will come here by hundreds, by thousands. All my workers will leave me. The wheat will rot in the fields. My sheep and my cattle will wander away into the wilderness. They will be shot for food by anyone who is hungry. <laughs> miles and miles of land, all lost for gold. Like the story I used to tell my children, King Midas, with his golden touch. Yeah, 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 I, I see, I see, Captain. Well, uh, help yourself to anything you want, Captain. I'm going after the boys to see if I can find some gold myself. In 1849, the gold rush started in earnest. 42,000 prospectors thronged Sutter's lands, maintaining squatter sovereignty. His lands were no longer wilderness. They were overrun by a horde of people, many of them lawless and wild. In 1852, Sutter was joined by his wife, Anna, and their children. He brought them to Hope Farm, which was all that was left of his land grant. One evening a year later, John Sutter and Anna were standing on a porch in front of their modest farmhouse. You are very silent, Johann. Is it because the view is so quiet and beautiful? Uh, no, Anna. I was just thinking how many long years I've worked to bring you and the children to California. Uh, I thought to make you a, a great lady here. I thought I had everything. <laughs> and then, then they find gold. <laughs> and when you get here, I have nothing this is a nice farm, Johann, and I like it. It was just a little corner of my land, and I wanted so much for you and the children. Ah, uh, look. Look, here comes a horseman at full gallop. Yeah, yeah. But it's our boy, John. If something must be wrong. Ah, uh, maybe he brings us good news. Uh, there is no good news anymore, Anna. Father! Yeah, yeah. Father! Whoa, boy! Whoa, whoa! Father! Father, I've got news from Sacramento. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? The Supreme Court has decided the land is all yours. All of the first grant. All? Father, you're a great man again. Your father has always been a great man. You'll be rich again, Father. No, no, I'm afraid it is too late. I shall always be poor. But why? The land is yours. Yeah, but how am I going to get it? Thousands of squatters are living on it. They say it is theirs. Yes, but you can make them give it back. That'll take Money? Money? Why, all that gold is yours. Not until I get every squatter off my land and move in myself. That means fighting every one of them, one by one, through the courts. Father, all that land and gold, all ours. And we can't touch it. Yeah, it's the curse of the golden touch, son. My sheep and cattle, my fields of wheat and corn, even the view up the Sacramento Valley, everything turned to gold. No, Johann. Not everything. Anna, what is left? We are left, Johann. Oh, forgive me, Anna. I was only thinking of, of what I wanted for you. I have all I want, Johann. A good home and my family all together. <laughs> Anna, I should have known. I have no gold, but I am still the richest man in the world. <laughs> Sutter's work was not done. With the more stable early Californians, he saw the need of government. He sat as a delegate in the convention that drafted the state constitution and presided at its first session. 
As a man whose courage and enterprise brought wealth and opportunity to millions, and as a pioneer in the founding of one of the great states of the Union, DuPont salutes John A. Sutter as a gallant leader in the cavalcade of America. In Sutter's time, hardy adventurers dug into California's hills seeking riches buried by nature. Today, another kind explorer, the research chemist, is at work in DuPont Laboratories exploring nature's innermost secrets, making discoveries even more important to you and to me than means of gold. Because these chemical discoveries mean greater comfort, convenience, and enjoyment for people everywhere. This evening, we announce another such development, an achievement of DuPont chemists that is real news for every person who owns or drives a truck or automobile. Let's hear how a chemist describes it. DuPont chemists have developed a new rayon yarn for use in automobile tires. DuPont's name of this new rayon yarn is Cordura, and it has a tensile strength as great as steel wire of the same cross-section. Tires made with it have been tested exhaustively, and results show four to five times more mileage plus greater safety. Four to five times more mileage with greater safety at the same time. That is news indeed. Many tests were made on trucks and other motor vehicles under the most stringent conditions of heavy loads and high speeds. Tire makers point out that one of the main virtues of this new cord, made of DuPont rayon, is that it stands up so much longer under the extreme heat which develops inside a tire when it is run steadily under heavy loads at high speed. And all tests prove that it will stand more flexing without breaking down, which is another important quality. At present, the output of DuPont's new Cordura rayon yarn is limited, and nearly all of it is going into heavy-duty truck and bus tires. However, production is being expanded as rapidly as possible, which means work for more people and eventually greater tire service and safety for all of us. Not so long ago, 5,000 miles was considered good mileage for a tire. But since that time, the tire manufacturer and chemist have made remarkable progress toward better tires. Construction methods have been improved, and DuPont produces chemicals that help reduce the cost of tires by speeding up vulcanizing time. Other DuPont chemical compounds make rubber tougher and help tires combat their natural enemies, heat, sunlight, and the oxygen in the air, all of which cause rubber to break down. And now DuPont chemists have developed this new type of rayon yarn, Cordura. One more outstanding illustration of how DuPont chemists are making good their pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. George Washington, scientific farmer, will be the subject of next week's broadcast. This coming Sunday, April 25th, many communities will change to daylight saving time. If your city or town does not adopt daylight saving, remember that next Thursday, the Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont, will come to you one hour earlier. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.